After seeing for ourselves the worsening flood situation in Muban City Kit nearby, we didn't sleep on Tuesday night, instead dealt with a flood in our own home, the subject of a separate video. Our soy had flooded up to Pegasame. The Red Cross compound next door was a lake. Boats were delivered for the guards in a lorry. Cars and pickups were evacuating residents. Our canoe was floating in front of Quan's parents' house, which had already flooded. Our neighbours evacuated, leaving their old black dog Ton quite incredibly behind to fend for himself in the rising flood water. He's a reputation for being vicious and we've been told to keep well away from him if he escapes when they bring the car in. He usually barks furiously as we pass by with our dogs. Sometimes I felt he'd eat through those stainless steel bars to get at them. Our neighbours on each side were flooded first by an overflowing canal sending water across this undeveloped land at the back of our houses, which has become a swampy lake. Wading birds, unlike dogs and cats, are amongst the creatures that are enjoying the higher water level. This area has never looked so fertile and natural and even though today it poses a danger to our homes, I can't help but feel how lucky I am to live next to it in the heart of a busy city like Bangkok. Quan telephoned Ton's owner repeatedly to encourage them to come back and collect their dog, but they just wouldn't come. Okay. Making videos with so much water all about, slippy and unpredictable underfoot, is a risky business for a digital camera. One tumble and its curtains. I've a waterproof bag and decided to use it for our first trip out in the canoe. Quan's father came along with us and we headed first to the main road of Pegasane, which was in the first stage of flooding. As Muban Setakit is badly flooded several metres in parts, surveillance helicopters were in evidence. Few motor vehicles are of use here now and when they are it's only in the shallower parts near to Pegasame. The flood water didn't deter those preferring to walk home as usual. Some prefer to be independent and keep their own company. <laughs> Plastic bowls made shopping lighter and protected bags from the murky water. Our area has all but become a series of canals for boats which are in short supply. Transporting dogs in boats frightened of water wasn't easy for their owners. Ties being ever inventive make rafts out of cement buckets, empty bottles for ballast. Lorry inner tubes. Bamboo. Shoes for paddles and so on. <laughs> Most adults seem to have resigned themselves to a long evacuation, no one expecting the situation to improve for weeks or months. Children seem to enjoy the warm water, not being attentive, unfortunately, to the serious health dangers it posed to them, rather an unexpected opportunity to go swimming. The residential soys around our home were eerily quiet. Bar's corner shop had the shutter down. Almost all our neighbours had left town. We returned home in the canoe, not wishing to spend too long away, 
as we needed to protect our own home as best we could, which had become a round-the-clock occupation. The situation with Ton in the house opposite was deeply troubling, to put it mildly, so I decided to try to bring him to our own house. I lifted Ton, trembling and shivering out of the deep water, got him over our flood doors and made a bed for him in the kitchen. He calmed down. I had all my fingers. In the dark, uncertain hours that followed, flood water rising around our home, I thought of my friend and his hardware shop nearby. He'd lost all his stock and his car to the flood, but to him it was just stuff. He remained his unfalteringly positive self. We joked together about how bright his future would be, being that everyone in the area would queue again at his shop to fix up their homes after the flood, and how we'd pick ourselves up and dust ourselves down and start all over again. <laughs>